In this clip, we're going to be learning about alpha channels. Okay, so I want to show you how to view the alpha channel of a node or also how to know if a node even has an alpha channel in the first place. So I want to kind of zoom in on this little postage stamp down here. That's what the picture on a read node is called a postage stamp. I'm going to zoom in and there's a clue that I get about alpha channels from the way that this little postage stamp is displayed. So I can see these little rectangles of color down here. And what they mean is that there is a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel. The white means there's an alpha channel. And then this little green one right here means that there's other additional channels besides kind of your base for RGBA channels. So that's because this is an EXR. We've got a lot of different types of information baked in. So you can always kind of tell a little something about the channels in a read node based on what colors are down here. Now, sometimes you're going to maybe only see a couple channels and it just depends on how it's been rendered. So every once in a while, I may only see like a red and that may mean that it's only an alpha channel. Now, why would it go into the red? Well, Nuke simply interprets any single channel as just being dumped into the first channel it encounters. Think of the channels there as kind of like buckets where information can be dumped into. And the first bucket is always going to be the red channel. And so it's just going to, you know, if there's a, a file that just has one alpha channel, then it'll just put it into the red. Now, let's go ahead and start looking at some different ways we can view these. So if I display my style for a selected layers channels. Right now, my style is set to RGB. So that's gonna be your most typical. Now, if I wanna just look at the alpha, now it's going to show me the alpha. So the background layer is you know blacked out. There was no alpha channel there. So the only alpha channel coming through, also we're viewing the merge, we're not viewing the robot. Um, so really because there was only an alpha channel for the robot, that's the only one we're seeing. If I move up here, you can see there's only RGB channels here. Now, if I change my viewer to where I'm viewing this, you can see it goes away because again, no alpha channel there. There's only an alpha channel here and then that comes along with us as we go into that merge. So now I'm viewing the alpha. I can also view the red, the green, and the blue. So you can see kind of how that information changes. It's displayed as black and white, but anything completely 100% white means it's going to have a 100% value for that pixel um, in terms of the blue channel right now, or you know whatever's the most white here, you know, I'm kind of seeing that there. That means that's a completely green. And because we're working in RGB color space, it's additive, right? So red, 100% red pixel plus 100% blue plus 100% green is going to equal white. And all those varying shades of gray in between where they're not completely white, they're somewhere between white and black, is what gives us all the different colors whenever those um, this information is how the channels get put together basically. So that's what we see here with these red, green, and blue. Then we have the one, again, RGB where they're all together, alpha. Then we also have luminance, which kind of looks similar to any one of those um, specific RGB channels. It's basically just saying where are the bright, the whitest parts of the image. And then I've also got a matte overlay, which is a pretty cool functionality for how to view this. So basically this is saying where the alpha channel is will be in red and it'll be overlaid of on top of your other image. So this is a great way if you are wondering, you know, where is my alpha channel coming from when you get a more complicated composite? Sometimes you may inject a different alpha channel for something or and lose your original. So this is a great way to be able to quickly check that out with matte overlay. Now I'm gonna switch back to RGB here. Now if I come over here to this side, 
you can see that this says, you know, what channels are we seeing? So this one is a little more straightforward. So I've got my RGB channels, which look the same as RGBA because we have an A here, it's kind of invisible because it's been pre-multiplied, which we'll talk about in the next clip. Now, if I click alpha, here's where we get to that part where I was talking about sometimes an alpha is going to look red because again, it just simply dumps it into the first channel it finds. So a lot of times in Nuke, you're gonna see red alpha channels. It doesn't actually you know, have any kind of differing um, way that it's treated in the functionality of anything, it just is gonna look a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. Now, there's also other layers here, which we'll get into later with this EXR that we've rendered. There's lots of different types of channels that have been created in this multi-channel EXR. Now, if I am over here, this one I'm gonna use probably a lot less often, but basically this is kind of another, it's not necessarily like the set like we were using over here, but this one is, let me come back over here to RGBA. So this part of our viewer doesn't really matter as much or you're not gonna use it as much. It's just a lot more specific way of looking at things. It doesn't really come into a major way to play until we look at other channels. So this is a way that I could look at a, let's say I have a pass or a, you know, a channel in my multi-channel EXR that is like um, my diffuse channel, basically. This is going to let me break it down to the point where I'm looking at my red, green, or blue channel of that um, one channel pass. Now, this starts to get a little confusing because um, these technically are what Nuke calls layers. And in our next module, we're going to be talking about the multi-channel workflow in Nuke and kind of what the difference between channels and layers are. So don't get too hung up on this part yet if it's confusing. The main thing I want you to focus on is how to see your alpha channel. So we won't worry about this too much. Over here, it is important to be able to view the alpha there. Most of the time though, you're gonna keep this on RGBA. And here is where you can you know, really easily check all these different channels and see them. And most of the time, honestly too, this will be RGB. You really only are getting in there very much for um, some, of the, some of the stuff going on with your alpha channel, at least for our purposes in this composite and in this course. Later on, it might get a little more advanced for you. So let's go ahead and jump into our next clip where we're going to be talking about pre-multiplication. And this has a lot to do with the alpha channels we just learned about.